This episode of Weed and Grub is brought to you by Quinn. Quinn is an all-cannabinoid brand that offers real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. How do they do that? Well, that's how you read it, right? How do they do that? Yeah. How, yeah. It's like rhetorical. How, the, do they, how, do, how do they do that? Previous Quinn ad reads? Mm-hmm. I, I would ask it like <laughs> I was asking myself and then answering myself because I didn't understand your how, copy. How do they do how that? How do they do that? <laughs> How do they do that? How do they do that? Well, well <laughs> that's how you do it. Okay. So Quinn, well, they can do it because their THC products are all extracted from hemp. That's right. That's how they do that. <laughs> all their products are third party tested and they use pure clean ingredients to give you a quality buzz. Check out Quinn online and use our promo code weed and grub at checkout to get 25% off your next order. Visit myquin.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use code weed and grub at checkout to get 25% off Quinn's edibles vapes, concentrates, and more. How do they do that? How do they do that? Oh, it's because you can get it legally in all 50 states and use our code. 25% off is a good deal, too. I know. It's a good deal. Oh, that's how they do that. (laughs) Quinn. Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. There are no late night vegetables and it's not okay. Not after a weekend like we just had. What would you want out of a late night vegetable? I I need like a 2 a.m. stir fry delivery service to be available instead of some kind of greasy taco pizza situation. I need I need vegetables in my life, but I need them when I'm hungry after a night of going hard. There's no late night vegetables anywhere and it's a problem. I have a hack. What's your hack? It's those bags of the stir fry cauliflower rice from Trader Joe's. It's got like scallions and peas. And if you um, toast it up with a little bit of sesame oil, it's the best late night snack. And it's good for you. And it does not hurt your body. Oh, that would be so good because love a chip. Mm -hmm. Love everything on our table today. Yeah. My body right now. Yep. Feeling blumpy. I ate so much last week that I wasn't hungry for days. I felt like an (laughs) anaconda post capybara. Like... (laughs) Full on. It freaked me out. I was like, I don't know if I've ever eaten that much to like eat so much that I truly was not hungry for like 72 hours. Wow. Like your body was like, we need to fast ourselves. I'm just going to call a timeout and sit on the bench for a second. Every cell in my body went on strike. (laughs) Like this cannot, we cannot tolerate this anymore. This She's trying to kill us. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to push back against that brain. Yeah. Wow. It was it was crazy because I mean we really started with your birthday at the beginning of this whole you know Aries season spring everything rolled into my birthday went to comedy camp out went to Sacramento like just all of us just like going 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 eating you know feeding myself what kind of eating whatever I wanted yeah and now you don't know, forget Vegas oh my and God. now we're on our way to Chicago which is a big part of this episode yep. May 3rd Laugh Factory with our guest Brian Babylon and Woo-hoo. you have never been to Chicago but I'm so excited let's both go on a quick let's go on an anaconda yes. fast I'm I'm on a cleanse right now to prepare this vessel for what is <laughs> going to come my way in Chicago I am cleaning myself up but like truly I yeah, I was I was totally freaked out. I felt like a fucking dog who, you know, just like, you know, if you some dogs, when you just leave them alone with the food bowl full, they'll just go until they like are lying on the floor moaning. Yeah, been That's there. That's how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I totally I was like, what's happening? I don't know if I've ever done this. It was just, you know, 420. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, before I say, <laughs> no, first I'll say, what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? It, uh, full and full of flavors. Yep. Full of flavors. <laughs> uh, welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And? Chicago. Chicago. Yep. Cannot Chicago wait. Chicago style. What you make me think of with that cauliflower rice hack mm-hmm. is really what I need to do is make a big fucking sloppy bowl of that before I go out. Like that needs to be my four a my four PM prep for two AM. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I then I can you. like I can um uh what's it called when you get rid of the ice on on shrimp? Um burn the ice? What? No. Thaw. I can like thaw the shrimp. Jesus. I almost said de ice, but I was like, that's not how you, <laughs> you get rid of the ice on shrimp. I'm, okay. You know, I, I'm a bit of a chef. I got you. I got you. <laughs> An interesting way to describe thaw. I got you. I, yeah. I see it. 
<laughs> you know, I have to, you have to do all those steps. So mm-hmm. I, you've, I gotta like, I gotta thank later me by taking care of now me now. You gotta pregame your late night game. Yeah. Yeah. Get it going. Or just fucking open up a late night veggie place and let me indulge in some delicious broccoli okay. made by someone else that I'm ordering in the Uber on the way back to my place so that I arrive and it arrives at the exact same time. Of all of the things I feel like that should exist in Los Angeles, it would be that late night veggie place. It's so strange that there isn't, but this is such a weird early town. Everything closes at nine. I also have a big beef right now. Uh, sorry to say it. Big, big beef. beef. Get it? Get Yo. It? Hey. Big because beef. it's actually with vegan food. Big beef. Big beef. <laughs> um, big beef. I just want to say it uh, 10 times. <laughs> big beef. This is Mike. Mike's big beef. Mike's big beef. <laughs> okay. Vegan food is getting to be fast food. Mm. And I'm not okay with it. I used to love vegan food, but now it just feels like sloppy fried bullshit. Well, that's because you're going to Veggie Grill. Yes. Right. What are you doing? Give me another hack. Matt, Michelle from Bad Manners, get over here. <laughs> get over here and get Mike and teach him some things, please. I'm so scared to go back to where I was pre-Weight Watchers that I'm very conscientious of it right now. Right. And I'm trying to look for like vegan places, but it's all like, you know, fried tofu, which doesn't do me any favors. Mike, I think you're going to have to go shopping and fill your fridge and take care of your body yourself. I don't. I think like you can't it. outsource it anymore. I, I am outsourcing. You, I am outsourcing health. You cannot outsource it. You got to bring that shit in house and get it on lock. Damn. Yep. All I'm right. saying it because I need to do it as well. I mean, I'm really, you know, when one eats so much that one is not hungry for multiple days at a time, one needs to get oneself in hand. It's very funny <laughs> to picture that anaconda capybara thing, but instead it's like a foot long sub that comes out. I mean, <laughs> I was shaped like food. It was. <laughs> Truly unfortunate. I'm also, listen to me. I mean, I feel like I've done every, like, you know, we went to Sacramento. I did your show, the 420 show. You fucking crushed. Thank you. You crushed. Thank you. Ten I had minutes. A, I, you know, thank you so much for that, too. Like, I know I was, I uh, the set list said seven, and I got up and thinking I had done seven. And then when I came off, you told me that uh, I'd done ten. And I felt really fucking grateful for it. And I had a great time. And I actually, ooh, it was hard because, you know... Um, you know, when you're a theater actor, you don't like watch the watch the game tape. But I see you watching yourself back and Ali okay. and, you know, just Baldev, like taping yourselves and getting this stuff, you know, like watching your game. And so I had to watch it and I watched it and I was like, hey, I kind of liked that. Like, I, I liked it. I mm-hmm. had a great fucking time. So but yeah, listen to me. Like, I, I blew all the pipes out. I turned my body into the shape of a chicken wing. I... <laughs> I need to take a break. <laughs> I get it. Um, also, that's a really nice point. I want to say thank you to everyone for coming out to that 420 show in Sacramento. The crowd was amazing. Shout out Cola. Shout out Lake Grade for supporting it, hooking me up, hooking up some people in the audience with a free half ounce. Thank you to Matt. Thank you to Ali and Baldiv, who we'll talk about more in a bit. Thank you to Michael Katz and Mendocino Cannabis Shop for supporting and sending some awesome folks our way. I, I chatted with one of them after the show. There were just so many good people in the audience. It was like a packed house. Yeah, and thank you to The Punchline for making uh, us feel so at home. The staff were so kind, and the digs were palatial, and the weed was fire. And the weed was fire. And also, yeah. can I shout out The Punchline's long fries? Oh. I don't know if you saw when I got the chicken fingers and fries, but every single fry was potato length. Okay. And I love a long fry because you can get a double dip. You can dip one end in, bite it through the ketchup or the ranch, flip that bitch over, do a double dip, and it's almost like each fry is two fries in one. I also feel like that means that they're made fresh from whole potatoes and they're not coming out of a, a frozen bag situation. That's the punchline. You're also making me think of this little kid that I saw last night when I finally was hungry for the first time in four days. And so I went out and got a salad. And um, there was a little baby at the table next to me. And I was just watching the baby learn how to dip fries in dip and her parents were really funny and they were just kind of letting her experiment but she was like she had like a, an assortment of dips and she was tasting them and it was just like it was a pleasure watching a new human a newly formed human experience the joy of a fry yeah yeah it was really sweet Ooh, the yeah. joy of a fry that sounds yeah. like you know how the joy of sex has all of the uh, oh, different positions i'm talking about children mike i am too <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i am too i'm still talking about kids okay the joy of sex is all the different sex positions so uncomfortable and and when we're t- talking about children the joy of fries and then i can see all these different dips and all these different fries and all of the different like combos and aioli with a nacho with a waffle with a yam like i can see a joy of fry with a baby yep. on the cover great i'm sweating <laughs> is that the food or because of my comments you said joy- i'm all like stressed out now 
<laughs> well, then oh let's get God. to the goddamn news. Let's get to we the Grublet Gazette. Change the topic. Come on. What are we talking about here? So, our- so let me know if you're a baby and you're looking to do a little bit of Joy of Fry. It's going to go into publishing this year. Yep. And uh, There's a baby coming into, into the world. I went to a baby shower yesterday. One of our very good friends is having a baby. Do you oh, think well, if I- don't need to talk about it too much, but I'm excited about it. And I think I will approach her about this new book I have. Oh, great. The Joy of Fries. The Joy of Fries. Nice. She'll appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, Grub La Gazette, our news story this week is coming to us from MarijuanaMoment.net. The headline is, 7 in 10 Americans back marijuana legalization with majorities embracing pro-reform politicians Two new polls find. It's just more good news about um, people supporting legalizing cannabis. So it's uh, two recent polls say that most Americans would be more likely to support politicians that back reform. Are you listening, Biden? Um There was a market research firm that found 69% of Americans back adult use legalization and a whopping 92% back legalizing cannabis for medical use. 92%. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was 2010 when it finally tipped over into a majority supporting medical use. And now it's almost, you know, total support, which is amazing because people are really seeing the benefits, you know? Absolutely. Colorado and Washington have had legal cannabis for a decade now. So the results are really coming in. The data is coming in. And that's, you know, what's so important for this. Um... The survey also found that 65% of Americans said that they've personally tried cannabis. Yeah. 65%. That's two thirds of Americans say that they've tried it. Yeah. And, and I then, probably and smoked admitting with to them. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great, right? It is great, too, because when we had uh, David Holland, lawyer David Holland on the podcast, yes. we were, I was kind of just point blank asking him, like, what is it going to take to make weed go federally legal? And he said, it's a. As much as politicians will be like playing to their base or like making sure they stay in a position, at the end of the day, data is a huge important part of any kind of growth in any sector of um, America's well-being. And so if two polls are coming out like that, that means that like the data driven analytics are showing like now we can make moves, I think is really what I'm saying. Right. And I think a big part of it, too, is that, you know, it's not a priority for politicians. They've got other things that they feel are more urgent and, you know, deserve their attention and and funding and all that kind of stuff. But really what people are now saying is we want you to pay attention to this. Make it a priority. Like yeah. this is it's time. And um, I think this month they're going to introduce the CAOA, which is a new piece of legislation that a lot of people are feeling really hopeful about because it's, um, you know, sort of wrapping up a bunch of the different aspects of all of the various pieces of legislation, like the Moore Act, which was just passed by Congress and the Safe Banking Act and all that kind of stuff. But it's also got a lot of the aspects that um, Democrats are asking for, like the social justice equity. So this is a real equity. beautiful dip situation. It's it all is. the best dips it's on one table. Dips. The joy of cannabis legalization yes (laughs) if you're a child and you want to be on the cover of my second book cannabis legalization no kids at me stop with the children and the weed and the sex (laughs) this just we're gonna silo those things okay okay Okay. all right thank you anyway that's the news it's just people people want to legalize cannabis and they're they're saying it loud loudly and they want the politicians to listen Uh, and this is also a really good time to say like keep dming us if we can connect good people who want to become bud tenders or you want to learn more or you want to like get involved with something like normal um you know if everybody can come together in the community as it becomes an industry the yeah. community part will stay in the core so you know hit us up for anything that you, you you saying that just makes me i'm looking at the cup sea right now and just thinking about community and industry and the merging of those two things and so this is a new product from Cuff, puffco that we're looking at it's so neat Roger Volodarsky, the brilliant genius behind Puffco and all of the good stuff that they make, has come out with Cupsy, which is a coffee cup, uh, like a hidden pipe, basically. So you like can put your weed in what looks like a coffee cup and just stroll down the street enjoying uh, enjoying like puffing on puffing on your cupsy. I should have opened it and, first. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of film. That's a whole thing. Hold but on. anyway, we um. You're just making me think of it because Roger Volodarsky is one of those people who is like an industry leader and a, you know, a titan in in the cannabis space and, you know, like cutting edge technology. But he is so about the community and the people and the people that work at Puffco. I mean, I met Roger 10 years ago now. The people who work at Puffco now are the people who started with him. Chelsea, his director of sales, has been with uh, Puffco since the beginning, and he's just really about bringing people up with him as he rises and creating the best stuff for for people who really love cannabis in a way that I think a lot of companies miss the mark on. They do miss the mark. Yeah. So to show this cupsy off, thank you, Roger. Thank you to the Puffco team. Thank you to Jim. 
Uh, it's a coffee cup. It's beautiful. Yep. And then fill it with coffee. And then you've got your little bowl right here. Yep. Stop. Yep. This is so freaking And then the mouthpiece is where you, yeah. You and can then the mouthpiece the is right here. It's so fantastic. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We'll have to light it up and put it on. We'll make an Instagram reel or something so you can see it in action. It's so great. I'm just so like cool. stoked to know people like that who are really marrying community with industry in a forward thinking way that's just, you know, I think beneficial for everyone. Well, before we get to Buds of the Week, because I, I think you covered a story on it at Gentleman Toker, I had deep FOMO for New York 420. And I saw Roger there. I saw Capetta there. I saw Bean there. I saw... I saw this community. I, I don't. I don't know the name of the park, but it looked like Washington New York park. did 420 right. So I just would love to hear a little bit more about that before we move on to buds of the week. Oh wow! So it was the first 420 that was um, safe to socialize uh, since um, New York legalized weed because they legalized it last at the end of last March, and so that 420 was like you know deep COVID times, and so this 420. I think, you know, anyone who has connections to New York just felt like they needed to be there and they needed to be in Washington Square Park. And it just looked like an incredible gathering. And yeah, I, I edited a piece about it for Gentleman Toker. So I had just, a you know, kind of a view through someone else's experience. But it just sounds like it was celebrating the culture and had nothing to do with what I think has become really saturated here in California because of the legal market, which is like, brands galore just saturating you know your your brain and your airwaves and your inbox with like marketing emails this was about getting together sending a huge plume of smoke up to the sky and saying like holy shit look at what we holy did holy smokes holy smokes look at what we did yeah. look at what we did and now we get to enjoy this together so i just yeah it just sounds like it was a pretty incredible time and congratulations to new york and congratulations to all our friends in new jersey who can now buy legal weed uh, i got a text from our friend jordan uh showing the receipt and Jordan was saying that um, taxes aren't that bad Great. in New Jersey, which is fantastic news because obviously they're crushing here in California. And um, yeah, I think, you know, it's it's great. And we'll we'll see how it rolls out. Hopefully, hopefully they've beaten some of the um, difficulties that we've experienced here with legalizing weed 100%. in California. And yeah. if you're not in a legal st state yet. Yeah. Definitely check out Quinn yep. because it's if you don't have access and everyone should have access to cannabis or something like Delta 9 THC if you're not in a place that has access. And I think Quinn is a dynamite resource for everyone all over every 50 states. I mean, look at these orange pistachio cookies. Like, yep. what are you talking about? Look at these. Toffee Oreo. Delicious. I like the dark chocolate cappuccino a lot. Um, Same. And they're vegan. And Come they're on. sourced from hemp. So they're an all cannabinoid brand. They're sourcing all of their cannabinoids from hemp. And that means that they're able to ship to all 50 states. Which is cool. And they have cookies. They have vape vape cartridges they have syrup they have um I, I think it's just the best array of everything i could ask for mm -hmm. that will be delivered directly to my door and use weed and grub for 25 percent off i do have a pitch for quinn great late night veggies for mike <laughs> yeah if we can do <laughs> can you get some infused veggies over to mike's house so that he can enjoy his weed and grub and feel healthy and uh please some compliant. broccoli broccoli yep <laughs> oh, if you can send me some broccoli, broccoli, I will be yours forever. Broccoli, broccoli, would buy. Would buy, yeah, right? That's yeah, that's a great idea. Some infused broccoli, broccoli? Yep. Come on, Quinn. Sounds great. You heard it here first. Well, let's get into the R&D stages. <laughs> Perfect. And then the other R&D, recess and drugs. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, all right. I, I got nervous. I was too sincere, so I had to make a joke. I, listen, I feel you. Yeah. I Check out Quinn, y'all. It. Check it out. They're great. Yeah. Oh, one more. What? Um. Thank you for painting this oh yeah for us also that was a friend from sacramento we went to a dispensary opening on sac uh, on 420 in sacramento just like industrial park with like people on stilts blowing bubbles and there was a roller skater fairy girl with rainbow wings and it was awesome like oh mama t who was like hooking it up with all the merch and weed and yeah she was so so I, fun before i get to my bud bud mm -hmm. i just want to say shout out to depressed happily is the instagram and uh they painted this and uh you can check out all their artwork on instagram at depressed happily nice okay so i'm dip i'm dipping into buds okay. i'm already budding let's get to buds of the week because we got our vib our paying with our very important bud brian babylon to. yeah okay my bud of the week this week Ali Lou and Baldev Sandu because double bud, double bud. Not only is it Ali's birthday, happy birthday, Ali. Follow her at a loser, L U Z E R. Happy birthday. You crushed it. It's always been a dream to not only headline across the country, but to bring a feature with me. 
and get them paid and get them stage time. And then Baldev crushed on stage and then you crushed on stage. And it was just like, just my favorite people in the world all performing together out of town on 420. I can't ask for much more. And I just want to say to ba- uh, Ali and Baldev, thank you for being my true buds. Wow. They're fucking great. It was I, I really had such a magical time with all of you on 420 at that show. And they were fucking funny. And speaking of buds. Yes. You have a new bud. I do have a new bud. I got to pull up. Uh, blah, oh, no, I've lost the uh, I- IG because I went to the wrong. I have too many damn accounts on here. Okay. My bud of the week. You open is... up and your bud of the week is like an ex from years ago because you're on your <laughs> Insta. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Secretly lurking. <laughs> My bud of the week is John Ross, who we met at the punchline. Um, he and his uh I guess partner, right? May like partner. That's yeah. how I was introduced. Yeah, um, came to the show and then we hung out and had like the wildest night. It was. We'll have to talk about that another time. Um, out with uh, John and May, and then the next night you were performing on John's show in Placerville, and John put me on the lineup too, and that was so nice. And he's just so fucking fun and cool and great hang and a great comic and a great host. And his uh, Instagram is John Morris Ross the Fourth. So it's John Morris Ross IV, like four. And um, I don't know, new friend, new hang. He DM'd me and like sent me a cool thing about like, um, you know, now we're friends. And I was like, "Uh, I'm making new friends. Last week I made a new friend in Kristen. And this week I've got a new friend in John and May. Man, if we can get our eating and partying dialed in while still making friends. I mean. I'll be, I'll be a god yeah if i could cool it with the capybara situation and, and still connect just with be a people. little more normal and hang out with people it's gonna be great yeah <laughs> so that's our promise to that's my promise to you coming up yeah i will get myself dialed in but i'll still be fun okay great you know what i mean i feel you on that and after I will, chicago i will join you in that cool i will do it before chicago okay okay so maybe you can keep me on track while we're in chicago with our guest this week yep all right because brian babylon is the man he is our vib our very important bud v-i-b-b-b very important bud brian babylon um (laughs) come to our show laugh factory on the third uh chicago laugh factory it's a tuesday 8 p.m brian and i co-headlining i miss chicago so much and to be able to have an interview with brian today not only to re-catch up about what chicago means to him and me but also he's a fucking legend so what an awesome conversation so Awesome to connect. We initially met at a uh, outdoor show that you were performing at, and we smoked a ton of weed. And then we were like, "This is great. We're all going to be friends." And now I get to come to Chicago and watch you and Brian co-headline. So it was like such a good little sneak peek today mm-hmm. to hang. And just uh, I'm so glad to know him. And Mary Jane will be flying out ten lucky listeners to Chicago for that show, putting them up in a hotel, getting them deep dish pizza, That's taking right. them to the museums. Yep. And uh, is there anything I'm forgetting? Uh, no, just your credit card number. And my credit card number. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to it. If you're in Chicago, come hang out with all of us at the Laugh Factory May 3rd. And without further ado, here's our interview with Brian Babylon. Mike, I know you love a good buzz. I am a good buzz. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. And if you're on the road doing comedy, maybe you're wondering uh, what you can bring when you're traveling to a state where cannabis isn't legal anymore. You might think there aren't a lot of options. I didn't think there were a lot of options. And honestly, it is very frustrating to be on the road and go to a state that doesn't have legalization. And I I don't want to get in trouble, but I want something like Quinn. You know, and Quinn is a great option for anybody. Yeah, Quinn is an alt cannabinoid brand that is selling real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. How do they do that? Well, I'll tell you, they have THC products that are oil extracted from hemp. All extracted. All extracted from hemp. (laughs) It's amazing. All of them are third party tested and they only use the cleanest ingredients to give you a quality high. And you can use our coupon code to get 25% off your next order. Just type in Weed and Grub at checkout. Type it in. Use your thumbs. I think that you're going to probably use an index finger for the W. Go to myquin.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use promo code Weed and Grub for 25% off. If you live in one of the 50 states, get some Quinn. Get some Quinn. Brian Babylon. Boom. 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 A boom, 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 boom. That's how you start shows off if you the blues. Yeah. That's the blues. A boom, 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 boom. <laughs> if, um, that's uh, they blues guys in Chicago, they will hold a show on a sidewalk with an amp and guitar. And really? Out there. Yeah. Really? Is this like. This is, this is, uh, and this is weird. This is a part of Chicago called Jewtown. 
And it was everyone knew Jew people called Jewish people called it black people everybody called yeah, it. Yeah, like Boys Town is Boy Town. Boy Town, yeah, but that's where the Jewish merchants would sell stuff. So you would buy your my dad said you buy your Chuck Taylors in Jew Town, you buy your your brim in Jew Town, mm-hmm. right? So every every Sunday it would be like the market. People would be you know selling thrift stuff, sort of like the Fairfax Sleeve Market. Yeah, yeah, the Trading but, Post, but more South Side Chicago. Yeah, so yeah. It would be like blues guys just going to town. So that's. Oh. That's a little blues nugget to start this podcast. That's off. so nice. awesome. Like, you know? I feel like when I was in Chicago for those six years I was there, I was everywhere from like Uptown to Wrigleyville to Logan Square, but I never like saw what you're talking about. Like what you're talking about sounds like the Chicago that I would fall in love with. Oh, yeah. And it was, oh, that's old. Like I'm from there. So that was like 80s, early 90s. Now it's, like, they call it University Village because UIC kind of, University of Illinois, Chicago took that part over. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the blues is, is real, man. Like Buddy Guys, uh, Spot. Um, I'm the Prince of Bronzeville, which is a neighborhood in Chicago. Is that right? If you, if you look on my wiki, that's what it says. The Prince Brian of Bronzeville? Brian the self-proclaimed Prince of Bronzeville. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. in that neighborhood, it was, a, it, was a, it was a blues club called Checkerboard. And um, famous, right? Mm-hmm. And no joke, my aunt, she had her little cassette recorder that she usually take for church to record the preacher preaching, right? But she always used to take it to the checkerboard and just record. I just like to listen to the blues, bring my tape. And that was her, you know, that was her iPod pretty much, right? <laughs> she had a tape, no joke, of the Rolling Stones coming, popping into the checkerboard, which is literally maybe as big as this little apartment. The Stones came in just to, and did a set with Buddy Guy. <laughs> and listeners, you can find this tape. This video is actually on YouTube uh, that night. And that's how, because I would always see like these Europeans getting off. And that was before it was, it was just the hood back then. It yeah. wasn't Bronzeville back then. You would see these like Norwegian, not just like regular American white people, but like you, you can tell like a European white person yeah. like sweaters and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They have weird posture. They have posture. The posture's <laughs> yep. different, right? Mm-hmm. You would see them get off of 35th train station on the south side. Where the fuck they going? They would be going to the checkerboard. And this is, per- you know, I'm going to Chicago to hear the blues. I'm experienced. And they would they would do that shit, man. Dang. Wow. Wow. Uh, and no wonder, like, you do everything. No wonder, yeah. like, you, you, like, we just started getting to know each other very recently. Because we have a show coming up. May 3rd, Laugh Factory, Chicago. This guy, this guy, this it's going to be dynamite. I'll be in the audience. Mary Jane's going to be, be there. Oh, yeah. You know, can I say something? When you live there, and the thing is, when I saw you a few months back, thank you, thank you for me seeing you, because you got me fired back up on comedy, because I was like... <sighs> yeah, it's hard. Being in LA, you'd be like, ugh, comedy's <laughs> yeah. garbage out here. <laughs> yeah. It's very thoughtful. And I saw you like, yes. And then I was like, man, let me find this dude. We have been friends. For almost seven years on the FB, and I forgot. So I don't, I don't even remember. You know, I probably we probably I met rejoined a few times. Facebook in January because I like just deact, not even deactivated, just like got off it. You know what I mean? But so, you were still your all your friends and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, dog. That's so crazy. But the thing is that like you make music, you make yeah. videos, you do yes. comedy. Yes. You're a writer, like yes, filmmaker, artist, filmmaker, Renaissance. The Renaissance of Brownsville. Wait, the wait the Ren- don't tell me panelists. Yeah, wait, wait. Uh, uh, yeah, you have to know how to make crack dealers and rocket scientists n- nerds laugh. That's my thing. If you can do yeah. both. <laughs> but that's Chicago comedy, though. Yeah. Because, you know, I came up, uh, I started doing comedy uh, later in life. You know, like I was 29, 30, dog. Like, yeah. where all my other friends, like, like Hannibal, he was just turned 21. Like T.J. Miller was let me like twenty four. I'm telling other people that I came up with like were young, where I had like corporate jobs. Like I worked mm-hmm. at United Airlines. I was working at United back then, and this was this was like pre nine pre nine eleven and around nine eleven. So I was the senior media producer. So I was the dude who made like the buckle your seatbelt and blah 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 blah. I made all those videos and like the videos of first class people. This is what you're gonna be eating from the celebrity chef. So I was like doing real adult jobs and doing open mics yep and they built a comedy club across the street from my fucking house no joke no joke jokes and notes comedy club first place i ever did stand up <laughs> in chicago i love holy that. shit that's why i fucks with you no kidding that's why i fucks with you you yeah. see what i'm saying 
That place was across the street from my house. I live on 45, 45th. I gave you my address. 45th. Jokes and notes is 40, almost 46. So it's like, I can see it right out my sun porch. So when they built the club, I'm like, oh shit. I've been talking all this shit. I might as well try it. And I went to New York first. And for some reason, I was in New York a lot. And I started doing stand up. You know Yamanika Saunders? Yes. So Yamanika is my homegirl. It's my sis. Even though we fight all the time, that's like my heart. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people that I help hide a dead body, like, it's my girl. girl right? <laughs> that was the first person to ever say, Come to the stage with Brian Babylon, it was Yamanika in New wow, York man. at this open mic with Gladys, uh, Gladys Simons. And I was like, All right, now I'm ready to go home and do it. And the open mic at Jokes and Notes is on this Wednesday night. Hands down, comedy people. The best open mic in America, in the world for comedy because it was a club filled with paying customers. Regular people that paid five fucking dollars and had to buy two drinks. You had to make them laugh, not a bunch of comics in a bar that you're trying to circle jerk to. You had to fucking work. And it's always a row of black ladies in the front like... I did my hair. You better be fucking funny. Fuck all this fuck. Shit. You know what I'm saying? So you, you had you to. Knew their, you knew it was serious because their head was always tilted. Yeah, and like, if things were going well, it would kind of straighten okay, out. Really. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I was, just, you know, Dion Cole was the host. You know, Lil Rel was the host. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ugh. come on, man. So that's, so that. you know, then you go to the north side. And that's back when Chicago was segregated comedy. Now it's different. Now everyone's doing everything. But that was, it was like south side comedy. And Northside Comedy. Mm-hmm. And I had did both open mics for the longest and had corporate job. Like, I would be taking conference calls with India, people in India, but, like, number 52 on the mic, on the list. You know, like, uh, all right, guys, I got to go, you know, get that project done, and then go up and do your little raggedy five minutes. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but... Yeah, it's a good it's a good town. Can we... I want to just share my jokes and notes story real quick. I want to hear that. So here's what happened. I... I did. I tried one open mic in St. Louis and it bombed so bad that I just was like, I need to leave my hometown to do this again. I don't feel free to like be who I want to be on stage. Somebody said you should go to jokes and notes. I walk in there and like you're saying, I saw like Lil Rel's picture. I saw all of these comedians pictures. And for me, Lil Rel's half hour Comedy Central special is one of my favorite specials in the world. And I saw three people go on before me, confident, loud, and I was like, okay, I can do that. Like, I, and my material is hack. I, I did a joke that night on stage, <laughs> all bravado, no substance. It was about pretending to shit or shitting my pants in McDonald's. So I faked a seizure and I was, I did the act out so hard that I'm like shaking on the ground and the crowd goes crazy. And I'm like, I'm the greatest comedian of all time. I got this. The lady comes back and it's like, come back next week. You know, whatever, whatever. I was Mary, like, Mary, yeah. you gotta, you gotta marry Lindsay bless. Cause I'm like this. She wants, she's looking for you. If you white and can do it, come back, come back. And then I come back and I'm like, same material, same set. Let's go. I fell on the ground to silence I shook my body to silence. The whole place was like, nah, it's one. We either saw you do this last week or you just had that fight or flight moment where you sold us on some bullshit bad comedy and we are not falling for it again. And I ate shit. You got to eat shit there, dog. Yeah. You got to eat shit at Jokes and Notes or I don't. If you came through Chicago and you didn't do well or crush or I don't respect you. Mm -hmm. And that's. That I, honestly, that probably gave you the swag that you have today. I probably it really. has to. I'm just picturing you like that woman who does the mermaid shaky tail thing when she's at like Victoria's <laughs> Secret and she gets busted by like oh the lady who faked the attack. Yeah, you know, like that, that Karen hilarious. who was like lying on the ground twitching. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, "Bitch, get up, get up." <laughs> yeah, I think I might have heard a bitch get up that night for sure. <laughs> like, boy, if you don't get up off here playing that old hack ass joke, get up. You do not shit yourself, boy. Nope. But hey, <laughs> so you from St. Louis? Yeah, I grew up in St. Louis. I'm I'm officiating a wedding in St. Louis. And I'm, you're a minister? Like, I'm no. sorry, wait, you're okay. I, I, I told them I took the course, but I don't take that course. <laughs> they don't think they even care. It's like it's like my boy AJ. Uh he's getting married. I met him when he was 15 and a he was in a bar, and I didn't know he was 15. AJ Lou Becker. And then, I mean you funny. You know AJ. Oh yeah. Yeah. He... I've seen AJ perform. He, um, he, I told him I was doing, oh, I know Mike. I said, really? Yeah, I know Mike. You don't know? I said, yeah, I don't really remember. So AJ, I mean, he was 15. I met him at this bar 
He did decent. I was like, you know what? Come do my show in Bronze, Brunswick Coffee House's outdoor show. Come do that shit. I said, really? Like, yeah. You're my boy, man. He came two weeks later, got up, did cool. And it's like middle-aged white lady comes up to me. He's like, excuse me. I'm like, yeah? She's like, thank you so much for having AJ on. He respects you so much, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, like, who are you? <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm his mom. Oh I brought God. him here. I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like, AJ's only 15. He lives in like Algonquin. I'm like, <laughs> bitch, what? <laughs> what? Wow. How did he get in that bar? Where's your, how'd you let your child, I met your child in a bar yeah. in the city. What are you talking <laughs> about? But I've known him. And he was my intern. Like, uh, I, you know, I started this radio station in Chicago called Vocalo. Uh, back then, he was my intern uh, for Vocalo. He's he's an adult now. He's getting married. So Damn, I'm going to do a night in St. Louis uh, after our show, May 3rd, Chicago Laugh Factory. Me and Mike Glazer going to light that shit the fuck up. Yup. Man, I think what's crazy hearing um, all the same people that we are now learning that we knew through the Chicago scene, I feel like the cannabis scene is also like that. It's like small and hopefully loyal, or at least hopefully the people you surround yourself with are loyal. Like, did you start smoking pretty young in Chicago, or how did you come to fucking I didn't, roll you know beautiful what? things like that? You know what? You know what? Uh, I'm gonna do a, a what, is, what is a plug? Not a plug. When you uh, name drop, name drop. Amy Schumer said to me, "We were in Miami. It was me, Amy, Dan Soda. We did that South Beach Comedy Festival. We we're out in my hotel room." And I was just rolling blunts. And she's like, do you have a machine rolling these? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I'm like, nah, I just did it. With my-. She's like, how are they so fast and so perfect, right? Yeah. So what I don't like is pe- people who roll horrible blunts that look like E.T. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen that Wu-Tang documentary that came out, Mice and Men? Wu-Tang members roll the worst blunts. Like, you the Wu. Every like, Biggie Smalls roll- rolled horrible blunts. People in the Wu-Tang, <laughs> they look like just infant dicks just they look just so misshapen <laughs> gotta be holes in it yeah uh i start. i didn't really smoke weed until i got to college because mm-hmm. I, I played basketball in high school and then we just wasn't what it was you know what i'm saying i'm way older dog so it was Point. at the time i was like center i was like the tallest person really at kind of one of the tallest people in my school which is crazy now and then i realized i went to this really intense basketball camp called five star where most of the people are like in the nba yeah and i realized like oh i'm garbage <laughs> like uh-huh. I, oh i can't play oh okay <laughs> got it i'm trash and i was like man fuck basketball i quit yeah basketball my senior year and i i got into the speech team and i did the chorus line musical no way and i someone sent the video of the final scene, and it's like me. You can see me way. They put me way in the back, far left. And the first time I really got high was the night we did the chorus line. I was so blitzed on there, and you can tell. I'm like, <laughs> everyone else is doing choreographed shit, and my shit is like delayed five, <laughs> six seconds, right? And I'm like, humongous. I'll show you that video. I can't wait After to see that I will video. show you that dude. It's stupid. So I smoked that weed that once or twice in high school. And I did not smoke again until I got to Atlanta. I went to school at Clark Atlanta University. And then that's where it just I just let loose. Damn. And weed wasn't even weed then. I had to like were you you had like tons of backyard boogie, Reggie. And you had to really find the people from California who had the good, good weed. And it was just, they, they called it Indo back then. Mm-hmm. And that was it. There was no strands. There was no this. There was no that. And I really didn't get into that until I started going to Amsterdam all the time. So, Oh, shit. She's been to Amsterdam. When did you start going to Amsterdam? You want to hear something stupid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've been to Amsterdam 28 times. Whoa. <laughs> no, no joke. That's amazing. Were you before, like doing comedy? Hell no. no. Hang out. This is pre comedy. Yeah. This is regular Brian. This is back when I went to United. You know, I have you have flying benefits, right? And I had been a few times before that. So when I worked at the airline, uh nine eleven happened and they furloughed me. But they still were paying me. I think it was a fucking accounting mistake. So for like a year <laughs> and like two or three months, I was getting paid every two weeks. And I could fly wherever the fuck I want. 
So I'll be waking up like, oh, man, I'm about to go to, I'm about to go to Rome. Or uh, I'm going to go get some weed. I'll go make weed runs to Amsterdam and just come back. I expect when the Gilder was still popping, you know, saying money was right. And then my mother saw my passport. Let me see your passport. Mark. She's like, what is all? What's all this shit? Bro? What is this? What, why you keep doing here? And then my sister, who's like 15 years younger, she narked me out. She's like, mommy, he's going to Amsterdam where you can smoke weed legally there. She's like, what, Brian? Are you a fucking narc, dog? You know, like, <laughs> you a fucking narc. <laughs> and that's that's when the, the good weed really started taking off. So I stopped going to, like, I just told my sister a second ago on the phone, like, I used to buy weed in the projects by Chicago on the south side all the time just for the kind of adrenaline rush. Like, I like to go out of country and find the hood to get just for the, like, where the weed at around here? Like, I've been in shady places. Like, so in Chicago, you would go in the, in the project or something and say, let me get two dime bags. And they put something in your hand, like, this shit feel light. You look up, it'll be two bags of crack. Like, motherfucker, I don't want crack. Mm-hmm. I want weed. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Like, what? I was like, Nick, do I look like a crackhead, man? <laughs> like, come on. He's like, my, no, I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm thinking about some whole other baby mama shit, dog. You know, we it would be serious. Always. Like my my bad, man. I'm, I seen you here before. I know you don't want no crack, no no crack rock, dog. Yeah. But yeah, but, but Loki, if you do, and we can get you on that run as well, wouldn't that be crack maybe? run? I just feel like some of those mistakes were not mistakes on their part. They were just trying to get you to try some crack. Nah, you don't think so? Nah. Okay, good. It that was the two times better. it was like, oh my, my my, you know, people just weren't. Yeah, like I've just been pushing so much rock all this whole time, like you know. So in Uptown, where uh, my neighbors downstairs, I'll leave it at that. Um, very successful people. Crack it, stealers? Uh, just like whatever. You just hang it on the corner. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Corner whatever. boys. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uptown, where? Uptown. And that crazy part. Mm-hmm. Right off Wilson. And the crazy thing, and I've talked about it on here before, is that um, the time I moved out, it was because it got really bad, where they took down all the basketball hoops at all the parks, all the cops did, because that's where everyone was congregating. And I was like, oh, instead of building this community up and putting in a garden and putting in like nice nets on the hoops or any of that, they just stripped it all away. And I was like, oh, this place is about to just be overrun with cops, just throwing people on the ground. If I left can't and shoot right. jump shots. I'm serving crack rocks. Fucking yeah, man. Uh, right? Yeah. If I ain't shooting jump shots, I'm serving crack rocks. That's great. Hey, can we pull that out? That's a good loop right there. Hey, I'm gonna sample that, dog. See, yeah. <laughs> now, you, now you now you producing, God. You know what I'm saying? Mark's got you. You know, uh, <laughs> but no, over there now, I just stayed in that area. Now there's this new high rise building that is like the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like my homegirl, it's like a Soho house within this apartment building where there's like different rooms, bars, pools, rooftops. Whoa! And it's like a dorm with no supervision. Like on the weekends. I said on the weekend, dog, they kicked it from Friday to Sunday. It was like, if you have a family in here, what do you do? Yeah. There's no secret. It was like the, the door person. And that motherfucker ain't gonna do shit. It was, I gotta find a place for that. We got off topic. I'm sorry. Oh, can we, you, you do Wait Wait? Yes. Mary Jane introduced me to Wait Wait. Wait Wait, don't tell me. The NPR News Quiz with Peter Sago. This is NPR. What do you think? Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, I, you know, I'm a nerd. I tune in all the time because, mm. you know, it's great. It's a news and trivia. So you heard me fun. on Wait before? Yeah. Wow. Gotta say something. <laughs> I like that show, but it, it annoys me a lot. Right. I'd love to, I'd love to hear sort of like some inside scoop because you're so great on it, but also I'm, I can imagine that it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, the thing is, I, I, it was, it's, it was literally one of those right place, right time situations. Mm-hmm. So I told you I had I started this radio station in Chicago called Vocalo, which uh, is, is part of WBEZ, which is the station that helps produce or help produce weight weight. So Peter, Mike, the whole team actually sat in the cubicles a row for me, right? So I, we, you know, you start seeing even though we didn't work on the same shit, you see people blah, blah, whatever, and they knew I did comedy, and I start pretty much became a big fish in a little pond in Chicago. That's why I had to bounce Mm -hmm. eventually. Right. You know, so, you know, Hannibal left, everyone left, everybody left, Yeah, you know, so just me. And I didn't leave because I was doing this radio show and I was, you know, never give a company your sweet, sweet talent, get the fuck out and do your own shit. And I stayed there a little too long, but whatever. So I was there. I started hosting the uh, moth story slam. Oh yeah. The moth story hour. 
when they took it out of New York, they took it to different cities and Chicago was one of the first cities they took it to outside of New York. And I, someone told me, Hey, Brian Babylon would be great. So I started hosting that hot show. Like people would be out there freezing five 30 just to get in. It would be, Shit. it would be crazy. You know, you know, I said on some nerd wait. you know how the nerds get it. like, wait, wait, people are crazy. Moth people are crazy. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> the show was popping. Um, I'm doing well. And I would always tell Mike and Ian, like, dog, like, why don't you let me be on this panel, man? You know, like, let me get a shot. They're like, I don't know, you know, really? I don't know if you really, I don't know if you'll get our audiences. And I'm like, dude, I'm doing it. What are you talking about? Yeah. So one day I'm in the, in the studio doing my morning show. And I see Mike and Ian, they come in the studio and they just pop around, look in the window, like, and they <laughs> walk away. I'm like, what they want, right? And then, doing a break that came out hey what are you doing tonight i'm like um i don't know i got it i had a show at jokes and notes nice i had my mary gave my own night of jokes and notes and i i uh had my own show jokes and notes i have some people booked i'm hosting it this night like yeah i'm like what's up i was like what you want me to be on a panel or something finally is that what you're gonna tell me they're like yeah um charlie pierce got snowed in and somebody else got snowed in and no somebody else got snowed in and we kind of need somebody like tonight and then I was like, uh, all right, all right, man, let me, let me, you know, come back. And then they told me how much money it was, right? I'm like, I already got back. And I told my my, my co-host, Molly, they want me to be on the panel. She's like, you fucking do it. Are you kidding me? That's fucking huge. I'm like, yeah, right? I should do it, right? So I called Clark Jones, which is a comic friend of mine. Great comic. Uh, yeah. He has a, he just got a Comedy Central special that just. Yeah. Worked. Clark Jones, yeah. my little brother, uh, who I play 2K with every night, um, uh, I said, yo, I need you to host a show at Jokes and Notes, dog. Uh, got something to do. So I did it. No prep. Killed it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Fucking kill it. I get what the fuck this is about, man. I, watch, I listen to this dumb ass show. Riff with these motherfuckers. <laughs> Make it funny. What the fuck you talking about? It's not rocket science, dog. Right. Yeah. Right. And that was, that was, what? This is about 10 years, 11 years later. You know? So it is what it is. I think now they're trying to make it more young and hip because i listened to it a few weeks ago it was like during the covid it was painful it really yeah it was yeah i felt sorry for if you're a wait wait fan is it laugh tracked yeah. no, no no well well they tried a few a few laugh tracks during zoom but it was only on occasion it was like the worst zoom meeting of all time yeah and, <laughs> and um but now in front of a lot i i did the first show back in front of a live audience in Chicago in November, which was fun. And it was good to see, you know, when you're out there and fun, Scott Chance, the rapper, was my little homie. He was the, the guest. That was fun to that see him. That was up. It was fun, right? Yeah, it was great. It was some good times. I have a, I have a outtake that I didn't put in. And they take a lot of my funny shit out, too. I wonder how much editing goes a into lot. it. Do they, really? My shit be yeah. hot. My yep. shit be hilarious, y'all. And they cut that shit out and put... Some Helen Hong shit on top of it, which is crazy. <laughs> Damn. I was listening last week and um, someone came out with a little a, a bit about weed and you could hear Peter Sagel try to shut it down right away. I was like, oh man, I guess that's yeah, NPR. He, yeah, Peter's more into uh, farts and poo. And, yeah. You know, he's you know, Harvard people, man. Making fun of Trump. and Yeah, know. it's like, you know, it's hard. So I'm actually <laughs> developing a new show. What? And I can I can tell y'all here. Yes, exclusive. Right. Love it's exclusive. uh I'm I'm pitching it to the uh the program director at NPR in a couple of weeks. It takes two of my passions, uh music and funniness shit. So it's just sort of like um imagine like American American Idol and uh the Limerick Challenge, which you know. Yep. Put those two together things together. So you have people who like make tracks on social media, right? Like, hey, come up with an idea for this. Like, it's a drum loop or whatever, or a piano riff. And then people make up a song or a rap about something that they heard on NPR. Oh. Not rocket science. I host it. I'm funnier than Peter Sagal. My friends are funny, too. And it's going to be yeah. hot. Ooh. It's going to be hot as hell. Shareable, fun, funny. Will yeah, and, 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 I think, and I think the social media element is more in tune to where we are. Because, you know, and wait, wait. The whole structure is more for what was popping in the late 80s or 90s when they started. Voicemail messages, 
call-ins. Ain't nobody calling shit. Ain't nobody leaving no voicemails. It's like you got to stay up with the times. Yeah. So, hey, this is capitalist society, and I'm making my move. Fuck yes. <laughs> Which, speaking of, hold on. I'm going to bring up the YouTube playlist that you sent me. Mm. Because talking about music, Jesus Christ, man. Where is it? Uh, there's Professor X. You sent me a Professor X. Oh, Babylon Audio Dynamite. Yeah. Style. Uh, Stylo Gorilla's Bad Remix. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It. Well, can we play that at the end of this episode? Sure. Okay. Play that. Right. Well, this thing is, I make, I, I've been making, I've been making beats or fucking around. I've been trying to make beats for longer than I've been doing comedy for over, over 20 years. And I was horrible at it. When I first started was, and I, I bought like an MP, which is a beat machine that you see, like a rapper. I bought like a, Twelve hundred dollar Korg Triton. Don't know how to play the piano, but you get the sounds, the drum boo. Had it set up, was garbage. My ex girlfriend Courtney was always like, "Your beats are horrible." Just beep 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 beep. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> they were garbage. You no joke. I mean, I was there was a fax machine. It was playlist. just <laughs> it was just the worst shit. And I do, I do another uh, uh, cool people name drop story. Uh, I knew I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. When my one of my close friends. She dated John Monopoly, who was Kanye West's manager in Chicago, right? So I knew Joe, John Monopoly. His uncle actually was my dad's boss. So I've known him. Chicago's real small, you know, in, in a way. And uh, she was dating uh, Kanye's manager, John, and we were going to the Dragon Room one night. And she's like, you know what? We got to go pick up uh, John's uh, cl- client, this that Kanye kid. And, you know, girlfriends support you, but then, what do you mean you in the studio, nigga? You ain't in the studio. What you doing? You know, you in the studio. You busy, you know. So she always had this <laughs> this app where like, this fucking fucking real, right? So Kanye gets in the truck, my cousin's car, and she's like, she's like, no, Brian, this dude, this kid talks a lot. I'm like, so don't, you know, don't, I know how you get. I'm like, all right, don't say shit. So he gets in, hey, y'all, y'all. he's classic, hey, y'all, 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 y'all. talking. I'm like, fashion, this is not. So Monica was like, hey, hey, Kanye, um, do you have any of your beats that we could listen to? You know, my friend wants to hear some of your beats. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a new tape I just finished, right? So he puts the tape in my cousin's car, and he plays it, right? And we on the way to the club. I'm like, I'm just like, what the fuck is this shit? It sounds nuts. Like, right? I'm like, fuck. I ain't never heard nobody do it. It's like, all oh, like the fake, the drum shit. So I'm like, I turn around, hey, man, these are hot, dog. Like, what are you what are you using to make these? You know, I, I've tried fucking around with beats. Like, it's like, you got an MP or a, a uh, keyboard's like nah nah man nah i made these uh all on fruity loops i got a free version of fruity loops on limewire i'm like what yeah <laughs> the fucker said a free copy of fruity loops off limewire <laughs> okay so we got the car and monica was like so what do you think is that, is that any good she's like i was like yo I ain't never heard nobody doing no shit up like that on some fucking Fruity Loops, nigga. That nigga blew my mind. Yeah. What the fuck was that? She's like, okay, okay. And then you have Kanye West today. So, a genius or whatever, Oof. he he got it. Yeah. There is that wild time that I don't know if I understood it when I was in Chicago, but everything that I was listening to and enjoyed from hip hop to just all music, all comedy, everything, like Chicago was the hub for like all art and tenor entertainment in my world for like at least the 90s if not the early 2000s like it's pretty fucking wild it's because i think it's in the and middle. the bulls sorry it's, but like between the bulls well, music and comedy like and what? theater and theater fucking the best theater in the country well uh, this, here's the thing with that i say was the, the whole thing about chicago and why it's dope to start there or come through there to, to start your shit new york is cute and it is what it is you can't make it you get it but it's cute <laughs> And I get it. It may it's, it's the big city, yep. energy, the money, got it. LA, Hollywood, got it. But Chicago is where the heartbeat is of this country. It's not the south, it's not the north, it's not the you know, it's right in the middle and you get everything and you get the frequency of doing high caliber shit, even more so in New York. Like you can be a comic and be in the game and look up. Like I know comics down in Chicago, right? Who, when I came up, you had to work so hard to get on a Laugh Factory stage. Now, you look at the Laugh Factory on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. It destroys the one here. You got 300 people drinking, having a good time. Not that it's people people have to be fucking funny. 
You're not going up there because, oh my God, I've seen you on TV. Mm-hmm. Or, or we're going to say, you see some, some Michael Rappaport or some shit like that. Like, fuck that. That shit ain't going to fly. I feel too like there's got to be some correlation between the, uh, like how close it is to Toronto and the lifeblood coming from like the great comedy and theater in Toronto as well. I mean, I'm Canadian, so I'm obviously biased, but like there are so many amazing Canadian comics who come down through Chicago you and Second City. Chicago and it's, and you it's, know, it's, that's the artery, like, right? And it's like the, the people, the Second City people who come from TDOT, they, they are usually the quality actors yeah. because you, you get like the Goodman Theater, Steppenwolf, uh, I, um, Looking Glass, Looking Glass. All these theater companies do shit that is accessible for artists that you don't have to go through all these funky ass gatekeepers as you would in New York. You can yeah. be on a quality stage. If if you're in a set design, you can work on some cool ass shit. If you, you know, if you do mm-hmm. anything, you can get in there and really get your hands dirty fast versus going through all the bullshit, like barking shows and all that fuck shit. It's cute. But I say, go to Chicago first. My man, Tim Smith, who's uh who's a Chicago uh, com. He just left Chicago from New York. He's going to murder. Yeah. He's yeah. going to murder, dog. He's, He's so ready. Come. He's so ready, man. I just feel like yeah, Tracy Latz is one of my favorite um, theater artists of all time and Carrie Coons, and they both come from Chicago. Like, there, there's a lack of pretension that, you know, happens when you're on a stage in Chicago because you can't, you can't be a, a jerk. Like, you can't be an inauthentic. People in the Midwest you know? see through phony. They see it. Fast as fuck. Mm-hmm. They don't like it. We Mm-mm. don't want it. Be who you are. Yeah. Speaking of being who they are, it's not, we can get back to what you're talking about. What's up? Uh, well, I have a question for you about Chicago, though. What? Do people tell you that they love you in Chicago? Yeah, I mean. The way they do here in L.A.? You know how people okay. in L.A. are like, you know, really free with their emotions. And it freaks me out because I'm from the East Coast. And when someone who I don't know is like overly emotional with me, it worries me out. So I wonder what it's like in Chicago. It's, <laughs> it, it's well, the, pe- the people, they never tell you they love you. They just, you can tell us they fuck with you. Mm-hmm. You know, like I do, I, I, well, they, they, they only on Fridays now, but I did Windy City Live, which is sort of like the Good Morning America version uh, TV show on ABC that took Oprah's time slot, right? So I was like uh, one of the host chat people, so I would be on that a lot. And you realize the people who watch that show, just regular people, mm-hmm. like the people who work at the CTA. Like I got, I did this whole thing where I did a man weave, right? I'm bald, right? But this whole thing where you grow hair on the sides and then they glue like hair on top <laughs> and then they cut it into a haircut, right? Uh-huh. It's fucking hot, dog. It was like fuck people up. <laughs> you can you can Google it. Brian you gotta ba- get a picture. Brian Babylon man weave. Google that shit, right? So oh, I was on I was on Winnie City Live. And you know that chick Carla? She's like a, she's a chef. She's like a tall black oh, yeah. lady. From, uh, from Top Chef, right? Top Chef, yeah. yeah. So she was actually on there. And somehow we started talking about man weave. And she's like, what's that? So I told her with a man weave up. <laughs> I said, you know what? I'll get one. I said, if Windy City Live pay for it, I'll get it. So they set it up. They paid for me to get a man weave. They did a whole segment. And I got that shit done. Uh-oh. So <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was, it was like, you know, it was great. No joke. I will be, I got off the plane at O'Hare and multiple people who work at O'Hare, like the people who pull the, push the wheelchair, like the people who work the food, like, you know, just like the working class people like, ooh, Babylon, it do look real, <laughs> Babylon, I love that hair, Babylon, like, know my name, want to say something. That's amazing. They, they know me from that. Yep. They Hell, know yes. me from it. And they won't tell you they love you, but you can tell you they fuck with you. Perfect. Off that man weave, like yeah, got it. <laughs> That's an amazing story. Yeah. It's real talk. That's Speaking it. of authenticity, in Chicago, yes, sir. And it's funny because across the street before we're recording, this is a beautiful display for the show First Ladies, right? Yes. Uh, the first wives of the presidents. Uh, everyone now in the black community, I don't know what what white people think, are very disappointed in Viola Davis for her portrayal of Michelle Obama because it's not authentic. Oh, it's. It's insane. Is like, it over the top? Big? She's, she's, big? she's doing something with her lip. She's doing like some stroke lip thing with her lip for no reason. Like, really? I almost I almost will show you this video, dog. She's like, well, you're not talking to Frank, too. And like, black people are like, bitch, what is you doing? Really? Like, and it's not authentic. Mm. It's like, 
it's sort of like Viola Davis looked at the book of Michelle Obama and one Polaroid, like, got it, let's shoot. Didn't do no research. Damn. Like, damn. And people are so like, why are you talking like that? Like, you know, just just do you. You we will believe you, Michelle Obama. Why are you doing this extra? And that's a, that's the real thing. Like you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if that's the one thing I'll say to keep people grounded is you're doing too much. And that's some Chicago black lady jokes and notes mm-hmm. type of why are you on the floor, boy, shaking like that the second time. You're doing too much. <laughs> you doing too much. <laughs> Mike Glazier. Okay. Yeah. Give me some more material. You're doing too much. Yo, that you know, is so you know what I'm saying? fucking real. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I uh I know we gotta wrap this thing up, but it would actually not be a Chicago style podcast if we didn't talk about how I am so excited to go back and eat some fucking food. I'm yeah. in Chicago. The crazy fat so thing shit. is, yeah, fat so yeah. I, that's right. Why I'm not. I'm just be honest. I'm not smoking right now. Uh, I need to learn how to be on the road and not destroy my body. And I destroyed my body in Sacramento this weekend. Like I am hurting. I need to drink water and eat some vegetables. So I need to like reset, but yeah. I'm also preparing to go crazy in Chicago. I cannot wait. There's an open mic at Wiener Circle now, dude. You're lying. I, all my dreams are coming together. So like what That's does Chicago food excite you? Did it ever excite you? Or like, are you on a whole nother thing when it comes to what you like to eat? I, you know what? I'm not a food. I'm sort of like a male supermodel <laughs> food person. Like, mm, I don't eat a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what a lot of people, what, they, they don't, ugh, you know, like, I hate restaurants. I hate, I'm not a, like, God, I love. I hate when people eat and turn a spoon upside down. Like, mm, I hate <laughs> shit like that. I'm not a food person. Yeah. So I eat for sustenance, but I like what I like. And one thing in Chicago that I like that's not there anymore it was this place called Dixie Kitchen. And they had this gumbo, the seafood Ooh. gumbo that was just murder town. But, uh, when I go home, I have my staples like across the street from uh, the Laugh Factory, where we'll be May third, May third, Chicago. APM. Uh, there's this place called Brazilian Bowl that has this thing that I can't pronounce. Then there's this place next door that has this this lamb curry lamb that's good. So it's like a few things that I like. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not a deep dish pizza person, so it's not. I, mean, I don't think anyone is. Nobody is. Have you had it, Mary Jane? I, I've only had it here. I've never had it in Chicago. Well, you never I've had never, it then. I've never been to Chicago. This is going to be my what first. What the fuck are you saying? I know. I know. Is that snobby to say? Like, <gasps> I, it's the I, best city in-, in the In the summertime, yeah. it's the best city in the world. Yeah. Even better than like Paris. I mean, Paris is cool. I hated Paris for the longest time. But then I realized Paris is dope if you have a smartphone. Because mm. I was going there. You know, just remember like pre- Smartphone traveling, when you had to print shit out on MapQuest, you had to have curious, you know, lonely planet books. Yeah. Shit was rough. <laughs> Smartphones in Paris now are popping. Mark I'll just held up a, uh, what did that say, Mark, our producer? It's, it's not, not pizza, it's a casserole. Thank you. <laughs> dish. Yeah. It's a bit much. Deep dish is like, it's good for the first two bites. It's like, I'm done. I'm done. I've, you know, um, but it's going to be, I think Chicago's going to be fun. It's warming up, which is fun. I I can tell you this. I'm not a drinker, but when I'm home. Yep. What, ice cold beer? Nah. Whiskey? Nah. Malort. The, Malort out of the bottle. No. I'm a, I've, for the longest, I was known as a comic who was the dirty martini guy, and I didn't realize how ridiculous that was. <laughs> but, and I was taken down. Six of them a night. Holy. Yo. And wouldn't, and we'll be doing like three shows, Ooh. right? Right? And yeah. people are like, Pam, are you okay? I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? They're like, dude, this is like your seventh martini. I'm like, really? Like, dude, they were like, you did too then. Uh, this is a, this is now. I'm like, ooh. Damn. But, but here, you know, here yeah. people don't, I don't know. It's just know weird here. Mean. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go to this place called the Ale House across from Second City at least once. Gotcha. And that place is open. I think at like 10 a.m. until 5 a.m. And yeah. you know, like that's that's Chicago. where my man was who won the won the uh, what was that Michael mermaid? Shannon who no. won the movie for the mo- who won the movie for that fake mermaid movie? Yeah, The Shape of Water. Yeah, Michael. Sh- yeah, I've heard the story of him. He was posting the... up and drinking when the Oscars were going on. I was right? Like man, fuck that, fuck Hollywood. That's some Chicago fuck shit. Fuck Hollywood. Fuck yeah, that is. yeah. That's, and that's my and that's my thing, people. Uh, my goal is sure, like you said, I make music, but I'm really trying to make a lot of my content. 
outside the Hollywood industry type of thing and doing it from my hometown in Chicago because we rock to fuck Hollywood. We got cash. We got fucking studios. We got creative people and we got better content writers. That's what it's about. The game has changed. Boom, 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 boom. A boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way to bring it home. Let's let's do all the plugs, man. Where can everyone fuck with you on everything? Oh, um, okay. Yeah, Brian Babylon at Instagram. I can't for some reason I can't I lost my Chicago number and got this LA number, so I can't get into my Twitter. So I'll figure it uh, out. Elon just bought it, so who, Oh, did it go? It yeah. Went. All right. That's hilarious and wild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh Facebook, uh go, go to YouTube, uh Brian Babylon YouTube. I'm putting all my music videos out there. I'm really pushing on this music out. Um my man Hannibal, my best friend, just dropped his music album last week. His ten song rap album last week. Really? Yeah. Oh, I gotta hear it. Yeah, we're taking this music serious. Um we we'll start at Eric Andre's birthday it was that was three years ago at the Regal Theater. That's back when the I suck dick for water dude was popular. Fry Fest dude. Remember that? Yeah, the fire it was a disaster fire festival. Fest. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like three, so we he started doing music with his band and three years later he had his album out. Um, I produced this track that he had like a over COVID called Cheers. We did it in Hawaii. It was dope. So we taking this music serious. Um, and that's it. And and me and Mike's show is going to be popping. And Fuck then yeah. we're going to go to Portland. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, we're going to keep rocking shit, man. You know, this, this ain't our first rodeo. Oh, let me give you this gift. Oh, this, shit. This, this is how we'll end the, end the show. Okay, bet. Nice. Hey, thanks for having me on Weed and Grub. This is my gift for Mike. <gasps> it's a high roll patch. Yes. I know Mike has been noticing all my Hyro stuff. I've been making. I make I'm a super hieroglyphics fan because they my, my crew. Here's a Hyro patch. You can put it on whatever you want. I will. Oh my God. This is going. Oh my gosh. You Thank put, you. You can put it on a hat, a jean jacket, whatever. Hey man, be creative. Do you? I will. This is huge. I am such a Hyro fan. Thank you, Brian. May 3rd. Yes. Left back to Chicago. <laughs> and please, Mary Jane. Yes. I will be cultivating your gift. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just, I'm going to bring you a gift. I'm going to be in the audience for your show, and I'm going to bring you something. Okay. And I'm going to, oh, in Chicago, yeah. I will have your gift for you. Oh, all right. Uh, thanks for having me. Weed and yes. Grub, man. What's up? <laughs> What's up? And uh, please follow us at Weed and Grub. WG at Weed and Grub.com is our email. Hit us in the DMs. Hit us with an email. Uh, ticket show link also in the show description with all of Brian's links, with all of our links, so on and so forth. I can't believe this high patch. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. What's up? It's Mike Glazer. Tuesday, May 3rd, Laugh Factory, Chicago. Me and my boy, Brian Babylon. See you there. See you there. See you there. See you there.